because yeah. it's raining sideways. Yes, right. All right, thank you. All right, we want to check in now with uh, Eric Von Anken, and he has been really uh, in the thick of it all day. Oh, wow. And look at what is behind him right now. Eric, you're in Bradenton, uh, you know, about 58 miles from where uh, Ian made landfall. What are you seeing right now? Yeah, Ginger Matt, so we worked our way up the riverfront, uh, so heading west here in Manatee County. That's the I-75 bridge uh, way in the distance there, so that's heading north. Um, the reason we ventured out from our uh, enclosed spot is because it seemed that the wind was calming down, and it has just a little bit. And as bad as this looks, this is actually better than it has been. Jeff, I can't see you. Move over that way. I'm sorry. So Jeff's, Jeff's trying to take shelter behind the truck. The good news about this spot is as we walk down the riverfront here, nothing is coming at us because the river is off to my right. So, you know, there's nothing blowing, no debris flying through the air. But this is what's going on. So we found this boat that had blown in from across the river. And there's a gentleman inside. I, I feel so bad for this guy so uh, he's, he's wearing you'll see him in a second uh, he's wearing a full-on rain suit like I am he obviously got word that his boat ended up here uh, banging up against the seawall and he found it and he got to it and he's been taking out some of the belongings we offered to help him he said the problem is there's just too much stuff on board so he's grabbing just the valuables it sounds to me like he lives on this boat I didn't have much time to talk to him just the first time he had his uh, hands full and just a few personal possessions went to his car and now he's back inside I'm a little bit worried about him although he, he promises he knows exactly what he's doing but what's happened he said the boat got pushed up against the seawall, and he said it started taking on water, and as you see now, it's it's listing, and it continues to bang up against the seawall. There's water. is still running, but what he's telling me, it's, it's not working quickly enough to pump the water out. And how did this happen? Actually, you know what? There's a line here. There's a dock line. So I I don't know the situation. I, I don't know if he parked here uh, and put his boat over here or if it drifted over here or if it ended up uh, not having power and he had to tie it up here. I'll, I'll try and catch him on the way out. But my point here is, so, again, that's north, and the wind is just uh, bearing down on us from that direction. And so anything out here in the Manatee River, or, or even across the river, has been shoved up against this seawall. There's, there's nowhere, nowhere else for it to go. And again, this is a river. You're looking at a river off to my right. You know, we, we are probably right around hurricane force winds, maybe a little bit less, probably less, compared to what we were feeling before. But these aren't the waves of the Gulf. This is not the ocean. It's, it's kind of hard to believe. But what's happening is, so now the water has returned. Remember, we talked about uh, the storm in the early hours this morning and, and uh, late last night, starting to pull the water out of this area, away from uh, the Gulf Coast and out into the ocean. And now it's back. And I don't want to say back with a vengeance because it's not like we're having a whole lot of storm surge. I mean, for what they were predicting, 12 to 16 feet of storm surge, we expected this to be up over my head. I mean, Eric, hey, Eric please come in. Come pole. closer to us, please, we're, Eric. You're making us nervous, <laughs> Eric. You're doing a fantastic I, job out there, but man, that looks violent right now. It's, uh, I appreciate that, guys. Um, again, the wind's blowing this direction. There's no, if, if guys, if you're watching at home, trust me, Jim Cantori is in a lot worse shape than I have been in <laughs> all day long. The, the wind is blowing us this way. So, I, I mean, again, and, and it's not even a strong wind. It's just that, that it's, it's churned up these waves so much that it's banging these waves into the seawall. And, I mean, you know, you see how it is on windy days when the tide is high. The waves crash against the seawall, and then they, they blow over like this. So we're not in risk of falling into the river, trust me. There's, there's absolutely nothing pushing us this way. Everything is pushing us this way, and it's not even that strong. My, my point is this, though. I'm 
gonna I'm gonna let the boat shelter me. So this is really the big concern in a storm, right? The wind and the waves and flooding. And so it is it is so powerful and this river isn't that big. It's not that wide across and you know, in this case, it's protected uh, at least this section by a uh, boardwalk, a little ramp that goes out. And yet it's got such force that this is what it's doing. So can you imagine these folks? And so, you know, there's, there's condos um, all up and down the river walk here. Can you imagine uh, these folks who were staying hearing these reports uh, of predictions, seawalls um, not being able to stop the water and storm surge? Hold on, hold on. I got it, I got it, I got it, I got it. He's, uh, uh we got uh, scuba tanks here. I'm gonna, obviously. Wow. Okay, that, that Eric's is audio, we're gonna, yeah. we're gonna stick with this here. Eric's audio is kind of coming in and out because he's yeah. a bit far away and his microphone is no doubt soaked right now. And he actually is helping this guy because, you know, he, he understands what's happening here. And that, you think that that is the ocean you're seeing behind him it's because of the way, it's a when river. When he told us that, it I was a, stunned. And I also realized that we have differing opinions of what strong is. <laughs> yes. Uh, oh, let's listen. I'm a rock because my boat I've been working on for three years is now completely demolished, so. The boat you've been working on for three years. Yeah. Wait, was it tied up here? No, it was tied up out there, and the anchor lines broke because of the hurricane. It came over here. I tied it up here, put all the bumpers out, and she was fine. I thought she would ride out the storm here, but uh, the winds were just too big. They came in, and they overpowered the, the vents on the other side and just started to slowly fill up the, the, bo the boat. So it, it was moored out there? Yes. Okay, so so it was out there, and it broke loose, and I saw the anchor lines, and I kind of figured that maybe you might have tied it up here. Correct. But but you didn't expect this to happen, of course. No, no, I I've never been in a hurricane before. I'm from Michigan, wow. so I bought this boat. I retired, and this was my retirement. And now it's uh, I spent three years and fifty thousand dollars just in repairs. Wow. It was just about done. I am, I am so sorry. You, what do you, what do you got in? You got everything in here, then. I, it's all my, all my tools. I mean, I was, you know, I was coming out here in the summer or in the winter and working on it for the, you know, the whole winter. So I had all, you know, clothes and, you know, it was, it was fully. I mean, all brand new appliances, brand new flooring. I just did a twelve thousand dollar convertible top, brand new. I took it off two days ago to save the top and. Now I have a $12,000 convertible top with no boat to put it on. This boat's a total loss. I mean, I redid both motors, completely redid everything on the bottom, redid the generator. I spent three years and $30,000. What, what is your name, sir? My name is John. John. John, nice to meet you, John. I'm Eric. Nice to meet you. Pleasure. I, I got to tell you, John, clearly this means a lot to you if you're out here at night in the middle of a storm trying to take care of it. Yeah, it's it breaks my heart. It, it, my generator just ran out of gas, so now I'm not pumping any more water out. That was the bilge that we were that seeing. Was bilge. My generator was running. That was the only thing I was trying to keep it, you know, hoping the storm would die down enough. The pump would keep pumping it out faster than it was coming in, and it eventually would have refloated, but I didn't bring any more gas with me, and there's no gas stations open, so now I'm at the mercy of the sea. I'm going to see what we can do. We, we may have an extra tank that we use for our generator. We're going to see if we can hook you up here. Uh, the generator is about sideways. I don't even know if it will run like that. I got to pull the probably pull the generator off and put it on the ground. But I have it chained to the boat. So I don't know. I'm going to go see if my key will fit it. But yeah. If I can unlock right. it and get it off, uh, she'll just put it on a so, new generator. So, John. It, Oh gosh. Okay, so what John is explaining, guys, is the generator is at the front of his boat and he chained it down. Uh, one, so nobody would take it, but two more than anything, so it wouldn't fall overboard. And now he's in the tough position of trying to get it uh, somewhere closer um, so he can, it sounds like, hook up his pump, run the generator and hook up his pump to try and get some of the water out of it. I, are you feeling like, Johnny, if you could. If you could get. All right. He's saying. Okay. Okay. 
Okay, he's saying it's not. He's saying it's not going to work. Gosh, what an what an awful situation. And and the truth, guys, is this is one example. I, I mean. You know, we're seeing some of the pictures from down south. We're going to be uh, there in the morning. And again, which is not far from us, 58 miles from, from where we are. And the Barrier Island totally underwater. And we know there's flooding in parts of Collier and parts of Lee County, uh, Fort Myers, where this came ashore. We know boats uh, have been tossed around. We, we showed you one earlier uh, right in the harbor here along the riverfront uh, in Bradenton. Lots of people are going to wake up tomorrow in this same situation, except John man is dealing with it right now you know he knows exactly what he's in for and he's trying to make the best of it but there's only so much he can do you want me to get that uh, yeah. the wind got it so anyway yeah Matt Ginger. All right, Eric. Oh, man, Eric. it really does bring the uh, whole thing. Yeah. It makes it real for you when you see that that is one man, John, who I, we appreciate him opening up to us yeah. in the middle of that craziness. Eric, uh, yeah. great work getting yeah. that. But the fact that his whole retirement plan. Oh, that's the thing. You know, we always say it's like, oh, well, you can replace things. But that's a very little consolation to John right now because right. all of his things are wrapped up in that boat that he has spent three years yeah. uh, trying to uh, you know, repair and as Eric and get said, working. all the way up and down the, yeah. the west coast there. Eric, nice job boats. trying to help him. Yeah. You're, you're so helpful and so thoughtful. Uh, you know, but get wish yourself into more, out, of that, out of that weather. Yeah, yeah, that's for sure. We wish the best for uh, for John out there tonight. Yeah. Our heart just goes out, out to him for, for sure. Thanks, Eric. Hmm. All right. That's, uh, that was yeah, a tough that, one.